Hello students. Today I will be discussing about the topic communication. So before moving further, I would like to give a short description of this topic. Communication. Communication is derived from the Latin word communicare, which means to share. It is the basic ground of sharing. It is evergreen topic because people from different caste, creed, they share their thoughts and feelings. Basically, there are two types of communication or we can say that there are two ways of communication. One is one way communication and the other is two way communication. In one way communication, generally sender sends the message and does not bother about the feedback like when we watch TV or any YouTube channels and the second one is two-way communication in this way of communication there is transmission and reception of ideas and opinions people mostly use two type of communication now this was the short description about the communication and moving further I will be discussing about the process of communication and the types of communication and what are the seven C's of effective communication. We will start from the definition of communication. Communication is simply the act of transferring information from one place, person or group to another. Communication is the most vital ingredient of an organization. An organization cannot lead without communication. An organization is a group of persons constituted to achieve certain specific objectives. The achievement of these objectives largely depend on proper coordination and integration of human efforts. This coordination and integration is only possible where there is an effective communication. Communication is an essential part of life. It is the lifeblood of the business or any organization. In fact, communication also plays a vital role in the society. Now further, I will be discussing about the process of communication and this process of communication indulges five stages first sender second message third channel fourth receiver and fifth feedback the transmission of message starts from the sender the sender encodes the message or idea to, through the channel to the receiver and then receiver gives back the feedback to the sender and when the whole cycle is completed we can say that the communication cycle or the communication process is completed now one by one I will be discussing about each and every stages the first one is sender sender is the person who sends the message. He is the initiator of the communication process. The success of the communication depends on the skills, abilities, authority and knowledge of the sender. He is also known as encoder. He has to organize and encode his ideas in an understandable language that the receiver may understand. Now, the second stage is encoding. Encoding means designing message from ideas. It is expression of ideas in logical sequence. Ideas exist in the mind in scattered manner. The sender has to arrange these scattered ideas in a sequence. Thus, encoding is the packing of ideas in a suitable code such as language, words, sign, figures, colors, etc. 
Now moving to the next stage, message. Message is the content of the communication. The information that is shared among the individuals. It is the region of communication which the senior wants to deliver. It is the information that is shared among the individual. It may appear in the form of verbal and non-verbal codes. Some verbal codes are lectures, seminars, news, etc. Some non-verbal codes are body language, colors, symbol, etc. Now the next stage is channel. Channel is the means of communication, the medium through which message is transmitted. Now the channel are of two types. First, first one is natural channel and the second one is artificial channel. Example of natural channels five sense organs and body language. An example of artificial channel loudspeaker, mobile, radio, TV, desktop etc. Now moving to the next stage. Decoding. Decoding is the process of understanding the message. It is done by the receiver. The process of translation and interpretation of codes and words used in the message is called decoding. Now the next stage is receiver. Receiver is the person who receives the message. The success of communication depends on the listening and interpretation skills of the receiver. The sender wants to share his views with the receiver. The success of communication depends on the listening and the interpretation skill as we have already discussed. Now it is receiver duty to encode the to and decode the encoded message which is transmitted to him and it is his duty to give feedback to the sender. When he gives the feedback to the sender, then the process is set to be completed. And the next stage is feedback. Feedback is the final stage in communication chain. The response is given back by the sender to the receiver. It can be used to modify the communication method to make it more effective. It varies different types of communication like face-to-face -face communication, written communication, mass communication and business communication. Now moving further, I will be discussing about the types of communication. Now there are three types of communication. One is verbal communication, second is non-verbal communication and third one is written communication. Now first one verbal communication. Verbal communication is done when words are used to convey a message. It can be expressed in the written oral form. Personal presence is not required as it can be transmitted through phone calls. The verbal communication is a type of oral communication wherein the message is transmitted through the spoken words. Here the sender gives words to his feelings, thoughts, ideas and opinions and expresses them in the form of speeches, discussion, presentation and conversation. The success of verbal communication depends not only on speaking ability of the individual but also on the listening skills. The verbal communication is applicable both in formal and 
informal kinds of situation now moving further the second one is non verbal communication non verbal communication is done when body language expression are used to convey the message it is done through graphical presentation explaining these both points the process of conveying message without the use of word either written or spoken in other words any communication made between two or more person through the use of facial expression hand movements body language posture and gesture people use non verbal to express emotion and interpersonal attitudes conducts rituals such as greetings and bring forwards one's personality the next one is written communication written communication is done by using words it is used for more formal process it refers to any kind of communication that uses a written language basically that means text using letters words and syntax to convey ideas and meanings the document of written communication are easy to preserve written communication is the most important and most effective of any mode of business communication some of the various forms of written communication are widely used memos notice report etc now moving forward on the basis of organizational structure communication is divided into two groups first one is formal and the second one is informal now the formal communication formal communication is well planned orderly and systematic in this flow of information is done through chains of command it consists of work related matter the formal communication is the exchange of official information that flows along the different levels of the organization hierarchy and confirms to the prescribed professional rules policy standards process and regulations of the organization now again the formal communication is divided into two types one is horizontal communication and second one is vertical communication in horizontal communication the people working at same level of the authority and this helps to coordinate the activities of different department in an organization it improves team work it helps to fasten the decision message can be distorted due to professional jealousy it helps a person to grow no higher authority difference so it is fast and flexible example meeting of principal of different colleges or meeting of secretaries of different colleges now the second one is vertical communication vertical communication that follows from junior to senior or from senior to junior it helps in the management of about attitudes behavior opinion and feelings of workers and vice versa it improves the communication between authority and subordinate that is junior it helps in management in decision making message can get distorted due to chains of command it helps to growth of organization by better communication 
It is slow and inflexible. Example, management to workers or vice versa or principal to teachers or vice versa. The next one is informal communication. Informal communication is unauthorized, unplanned and unsystematic. It is based on social interaction of people as it serves social needs. It consists of work related as well as social communication. The informal communication are based on the personal or informal relation such as friends, peers, families etc. And then is free from organizational conventional rules and other formalities. Now to make any communication an effective one, there are certain things that we should follow to make our communication an effective one. And for that, we have to follow the seven C's. And the seven C's are correctness, clarity, conciseness, completeness, consideration, concreteness and courtesy. Now the first point is correctness. Correctness can be defined like if a person, a sender wants to send a message, then he should be correct with his message. He should not use any false news to convey. That is the correctness. The second one is clarity. The receiver must understand the message as the receiver wants to convey. For this, the sender must use simple message and pronunciation is also clear so that the receiver early understand the message. The third one is conciseness. The message of the sender must be brief and concise. It should not be unnecessarily too lengthy. The next one is completeness. Completeness, the communication of the sender must be complete in all respect. Incomplete message may also create misunderstanding or on the receiver so the message should be complete next is consideration a sender must not be biased or prejudiced as it may create hurdle to the communication the communicators should be open to every suggestions and criticism in order to make our communication more effective. The next one is concreteness. Now, concreteness is the aspect of communication that means being specific, definite and vivid rather than vague and general. And the last one is courtesy. Courtesy is defined as a politeness in one's attitude and behavior towards other. So, these are the seven C's of an effective communication. And the every individual must follow the seven C's of communication. Now we have seen the different ways, the different types and the process of communication. Now after this, we will be discussing about the barriers of communication, the verbal and non-verbal codes and the how to make your communication very effective. We will talk about this section in the next video.